Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to make this lit and rotating display for your favorite miniature model. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And one of my favorite hobbies is to paint miniature models for wargaming. It's also my son's favorite hobby and he's much better at it than I am. And he gave me this really incredible present that you see here. This is a large Warhammer model that he painted for me. It's called Celestent Prime. And it's such a work of art that I really felt like it deserved its own display. So I designed this in Adobe Illustrator. The parts are cut on a laser cutter and that includes the mirrored acrylic on the inside as well. It has four lights in the top that are driven by a small battery pack in the back here. And the stand you see rotating inside, I bought on Amazon for $12 and it's a solar driven stand. And I had this idea, I wondered if I could drive a solar stand with a light. And I tested it with a single little spotlight and it was enough to make it move. So I felt really confident that four would be enough to make it work the way I wanted it to. Now it's rotating a little faster than normal right now because of the lighting in my studio so I can shoot this video. But what's really cool about it is that you turn the lights off and it stops rotating and you turn the lights on and it starts rotating but I don't have to do motors or rotation or any of that. So I'm going to talk about how I designed this and how I made it in this episode. My references for this design are to scale images of both the model and the base and I also have the size of the lights that I'm going to put in both the circle that needs to be cut and where the flange will fit and the height of the light. I'm doing an 8 inch by 8 inch box and I use the light references to lay out the four lights within that space to get uniform light coverage. I also do a simple layout from the front view to make sure everything's going to fit properly. So I have a box on the bottom that holds the model and then a separate box on the top that'll hold the lights. This layout gives me my basic dimensions and I'm going to start with the back. In these drawings, the red lines are cut lines and the blue lines are engraving lines. And the outer dimensions of the back are 8 inches by 11 and a half inches. I decide to do all inward cuts or slots on this particular piece. And this blue line, the engraving line, is where the mirrored acrylic is going to fit. I make side views of both the top, this represents the top and the bottom, and the side view shows the length of a side and the placement of the tabs and slots. And I use these in other drawings to get the placement right. This is going to be cut out of eighth inch plywood, so that's the thickness of the tabs. And I do one inch long tabs. I also do a layer for the mirrored acrylic, and that is the mirror for the back. Now for the sides of the lower box. I pull in the long vertical side view from the back. I'm going to need to match those slots with tabs. I'll put slots on the top and the bottom and the front is plain. No cutouts here. And once again I have a blue engraving line for where the mirrored acrylic is going to fit and I need to make a layer that has a cutout for a piece of acrylic that size. Now for the bottom, the front once again is plain, but I pull in side views from both the sides and the back and use them to create what are tabs going out on all three sides. The trickiest part of this design is the bottom of the light box. I pull in my light layout, but now for the walls. I've got a wall in the front now, so I'm going to need tabs there. And I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller on the sides and the back so that it fits inside of the lower box. So the long tabs here will fit into the bottom box, the slots in the bottom box, but these cutaways here are where the small light box walls will fit. When space permits, I like to lay out this kind of a drawing in this fashion, where I have the main piece in the middle, but I also have all the side pieces right alongside so that I can see that they're fitting the way I expect them to. The little wall in the back has a small circle for the wires to go out and everything else is just tabs that go down into the base of the light box and slots for the very top which is here. And this top just sits in, it's removable in case I need to make changes to the lighting inside. 
Here's the laser cutter cutting the 8th inch Baltic birch. It's all cut out of 12 by 12 inch pieces that I buy by the box. I always dry fit everything at the laser cutter to make sure things fit before I move on to the next step. For the mirrored acrylic, you always cut it from the back. You leave the paper on the front and that paper is down to protect the surface. And here I have such a tight fit I've rotated my laser clamps. This stabilizes the acrylic but it doesn't get in the way of cutting to the very edge. I paint parts of the inside of the lower box white, the parts that aren't covered by the acrylic. This will help the light reflection. The mirrored acrylic is beautiful, but it is very fragile and it scratches easily, so you have to be careful. Here I'm gluing it uh, to the boards before assembly, and while the glue is drying, I prep my little spotlights by removing the plastic clips off the ends and preparing them to be soldered. To insert these lights, you have to push the two clamps to the back and put it through the hole, and then the clamps will hold it tightly in place. I run two strips of copper tape, one's the positive and one's the ground, and I solder two wires and hook them with alligator clamps to the battery pack so I can test each light as it's soldered. Then one by one you solder the positive to the positive strip and then the ground and test, and here's all four of them working. I'll permanently attach the battery pack after assembly. I glued the bottom together in a couple of stages. I did the bottom and one side first and let that dry, but then I laid it on its back to do the other side and I used wood clamps to gently hold it tightly together while it dried. Then I set it upright and I glue the light box in place, put the sides on, and then put the top on. It's not glued on, it's just sitting there, but I weighed it down and uh, wait for it to dry. I solder the wires coming out of the top to the battery pack. I use shrink tube, you put it to the side, you make the solder join, then you slide it over it, heat it up, and it covers it and holds it in place. The moment of truth has arrived. Will it work? I turn on the battery, the lights go on, and sure enough, the turntable is turning. That turntable is a little bit smaller than the base of my model, so I actually use some sticky stuff, little balls of sticky stuff inside the base to hold it firmly so it doesn't ever topple off and get damaged. The lighting is even. It's bright, but not too bright. It's the best view I ever had of this marvelous model. The back is as magnificent as the front. I have lots of other great projects I'm working on for gaming and gamers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.